Hi world, this is Chatty Dad One. I'm issuing an alert to all Americans. We don't realize yet, and we haven't felt the effect of the Affordable Care Act. I've been doing some reading on the bill of what they signed in 2010 which won't be fully implemented until January 1st 2014 this is uh, Thomas Library of Congress where I've gotten my information weekly top five okay let's view the top ten here this is the weekly top 10 issues that they're dealing with right now. Continuing Appropriations Act. Water Resources Reform and Development. Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Emergency. Right there. Consolidated and Further Count. Continuing Appropriations Act. Bull crap right there. Border Security. Econ Economic Opportunity and Immigration Modernization Act. Federal Agriculture Reform and Risk Management Act. Border Security, Economic Opportunity and Immigration Modernization Act. Debt Free America Act. Promoting adoption and legal guardianship of children in foster care act Number 10 America's affordable health care Health choices act. I'm sorry health choices act I want you to see what I've stumbled upon that's very disturbing to me. This is actually being voted on H.J. Resolution Proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States to repeal the 22nd Article of Amendment, thereby removing the limitation on the number of terms an individual may serve as president. Okay. It's been introduced into the House. They haven't done anything since then really on it uh, they saw the fire that that uh, they, they saw the sparks that came flying from it let me put it that way let's get into some of this uh, monster that I want to read to you now this bill was designed to bring the insurance companies under control to stop them from from hurting people and not giving coverage to people well what this has done is it's going to eliminate the insurance companies they will no longer be able to be viable under this law they won't be able to exist they have tied their hands they have whipped them they have chained them you'll see what I'm talking about here and uh, this whole grandfathered in thing wow I think personally I think that you'd better get your health care before January 1st 2014 maybe you'll be grandfathered in on some things but if you don't do anything until after then you're under their yoke you're under the uh, power of the Secretary of Health and Human Services of the United States She's the one who calls the shots in all this thing. 
she's the one who does everything here. Now on the surface it looks pretty good. But if you get into looking at it, you start wondering why that's there. Why is it there? What's going on here that they've put this in here? Requires each U.S. hospital to establish and make a public list of its standard charges for items and services. Okay. So now you're going to go into the hospital and you're going to see the charges <coughs> of having procedures done, this and that. And you're going to go, oh my gosh, I can't afford that. And your health is going to go by the wayside because you can't afford it. That's not such a bad thing for some things, but it's not going to help people. Um, I would advise everybody to come and read this thing, to comb through it. Uh, you know, please. Makes this subtitle effective for plan years beginning six months after enactment of this act with certain exceptions. This thing was signed into law in 2010. Okay. Summary as of 3-23-2010. Public law. Okay. This thing is law, people. We just haven't felt the effects yet, but they are going to kick in on January 1st, 2004, in full force. We've started to see some things. Now, some things that they've claimed they're going to check into is a friggin' lie, because insurance premiums have gone up, and it says that they're going to make sure that that doesn't happen, and if it does, they're going to investigate it. The Secretary of Health is going to investigate why it's done, and blah, blah, blah. Okay? Um, let me see here where one just blew me away. I had to read it twice. And I just wondered, why is that in there? Um, requires separate accounts for payments for such services, prohibits any qualified health plan offered through the exchange from discriminating against any individual health care provider or health care facility because of its unwillingness to provide, pay for, provide coverage of, or refer for abortions. That means if your doctor refuses to do an abortion, he's going to be penalized. That he's going to be in trouble even if it goes against what he believes. There's one in here that requires that they can't, that an insurance company can't deny you for anything at all. Even if you smoke, that they have to accept you. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? They're going to have to accept people knowing that it's going to bankrupt them. Knowing that they're going to have to increase their rates. Even though increasing their rates will get them inspected and checked on and in trouble with the, the Secretary of Health. We need to find out who the Secretary of Health is. Because she's got a lot of power. Let me tell you, this is 
This is not good, people. This is not good. This is going to be the destruction of your health, of your freedom to choose. That's why so many doctors are switching to cash because they don't want to have anything to do with this monster. But, come January 1st, 2014, they might be getting in trouble because they don't in accept insurance. You know? I mean, they are freaking monstrous here. And, um, there's a thing in here that's talking about um, firearms. Um, that there's no way that they can uh, refuse anybody for let's see prohibits federal government any state or local government or health federal financial assistance under this act or any health care plan created under this act for discriminating against an individual or institutional health care entity on the basis of such individual or entity does not provide a health care item for service furnished for the purpose of causing or assisting in causing the death of any individual such as by accidental suicide, assisted suicide, euthanasia, or mercy killing. Requires the Health and Human Services Secretary to publish on the HHS website a list of all of the authorized authorities provided to the Secretary under this Act. She will have complete authority. Okay? You need to come and read this thing. Please, please come and read through it. Because, and you need to think about some things when you read it. Don't just read it and gloss over it and think, oh, how nice. Think about some stuff here. Because it's big time, uh, <laughs> it's big time control, people. Big time control. Let me see. I'm trying to find this. Uh, um, part about the firearms. But it's basically. It restricts them from doing this. It restricts them from doing that. You know. It's prohibited for them to do this. It's prohibited to do that. People will end up on Obamacare because there will be no more insurance companies. I guarantee you, this thing will cut them to pieces. Unless, of course, you're have enough money to pay for an insurance premium that costs a major amount of money and then they will be still with the knife at their throat. Freestanding birth center services Improvements to medical services required medical coverages of freestanding birth center services and two and concurrent care for children receiving hospice care. Concurrent care for children receiving hospice care. And I'm not sure that all these mothers who are pregnant want to have freestanding births.
permits hospitals to provide Medicaid services during a period of presumptive eligibility to members of all Medicaid eligibility categories. Medicaid and CHIP enrollment simplification. Exchanges and CHIP via state-run websites. I, I don't know what that is. Uh, makes technical corrections to Children's Health Institute insurance programs reauthorizing act of 2009 see it jumps back and forth to so many amendments and so many acts and so much crap that it's it's it eliminates things that it makes into law it makes into law things that were eliminated uh I, I'm going to have to go back up here further. Employee responsibilities. Miscellaneous. But please, people, come on here and look through this thing. Check it out. And uh, the more that I look through this, I'm going to keep checking out. Amends the Black Lung Benefits Act with respect to claim filed or after the effective date of the Black Lung Benefits Amendments of 1981 to eliminate exceptions to the applicability of certain provisions regarding reputable presumptions and prohibits against requirements eligible survivors of a minor determined to be eligible for black lung benefits to file a new claim or file or otherwise uh, revalidate the minor's claim. They're going to make him go through hell again. Um, this is just this just blows my mind. This is just blows my mind, people. But uh, I don't want to waste your time too much because uh, there's just so much here. There's so much that I've read and gone through already, and I can't find it because there's so much stuff. But please come and read this. I'll make more videos. I'm going to do more videos. I'll try to break them down one at a time because this is very important. And I'm going to try to do as many as I can before 2014. Before October, or I'm mean, sorry, before January 1st. Because that is D-Day for America, I believe. I believe after that, we're going to be in serious, serious trouble especially when people start seeing the consequences of this monster that is um that that has happened to us prohibits a health plan from establishing individual el eligibility rules based on health status related factors including medical conditions claims experience uh, claims experience, receipt of health care, medical history, genetic information, and evidence of insurability. Okay, somebody with major, major genetic defects will have to be covered. The insurance companies can't survive this. Here's the tobacco use. Um, prohibits the health plan. Um, under the, excludes any grandfather's health plan as defined in section 25. So you, the grandfather doesn't even friggin' help you there, imposing any pre-existing condition exclusion. Now we know that people have pre-existing conditions are being dropped from their insurance coverage carriers because they can't afford to uh, to pay. 
discriminating on the basis of any health status related factor allowing premium rates to vary only by individual or family coverage rating area age or tobacco use so if you want to smoke and get cancer it's going to cost them millions of dollars and they can't do nothing about it they have to cover you they're gonna go broke they will go broke people I'm just I'm just I don't I'm beyond myself about this thing this just blows me away I hope everyone's well and I'll, I'm gonna do more on this the more I learn the more you'll learn and we'll go through this together this is chatty dad one God bless good luck never give up your guns it's the only thing we got left that that is going to help us with any of this stuff we've got to take our country back we've got to do this this cannot happen okay this cannot happen and we've got to protect our health care system because it's going under 2014 is is uh d-day for the assault on the medical industry why would you want to be a doctor if you can't do the things that you feel is right why if you're going to get in trouble for not giving an abortion if you're going to get in trouble for not wanting to do a freestanding birth health care for all well it's health care for all lady but you're going to pay for it freaking freaking stupid people I swear people do not understand what has happened here it is just unbelievable it's unbelievable and yeah it's health care reform all right it's going to reform it right into the ground this is chatty dad one over and out